Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. We have Dan joining us today because we're talking about the F-105 Thunder Chief, which is the big jet from the Vietnam Bricks lineup for this year. It is, it is. It's been something we've wanted to do for a long time and, and finally it's here. So. Mm -hmm. I think people have wanted an aircraft back in this camo scheme like real bad. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it yeah. looks awesome. And, and the Thunder Chief has been something that we've been wanting to do. It's one of those airplanes that not, not a lot of people know about it. Right. Because it, it served a really specific role in the war. Mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody actually recommended a book to me a, a while back called Thud Ridge. And it was about a, a pilot who would flew this plane as a bomber pilot. This is, mm -hmm. this is a bomber aircraft. Uh, it is a fighter, but as a fighter bomber. Um, he flew it in, in Vietnam. And this was the primary fighter, uh, you know, that was used to attack North Vietnam, actually not doing supporting our troops in the South. It was not a uh, a, a tactical ground support kind of thing. It was actually sure. attacking, you know, behind enemy lines, behind enemy factories, uh, bridges, any mm -hmm. sort of infrastructure. This is this is the plan they use. It would penetrate the the North Vietnamese airspace and do its work, and usually under fire, great amounts of fire, mm -hmm. uh, and then scoot out of there as fast as they can. So. Okay. Now the thud nickname came because it did not glide well, correct? That's there's the, so that's many. The there's, joke. I, I've read so many origins of the mm -hmm. story. The, so I mean, Republic is known for making large fighter planes. They right. were responsible. The same designer who made the P forty seven Thunderbolt uh, also made this. Oh, so okay. So they had the Thunder Thunderbolt, the Thunderjet, and now the Thunder Chief. But mm -hmm. it was it's just a big giant fighter plane, single seat fighter plane, um, and it, it started out smaller, but as this is the D model. This is the mm -hmm. model that was the most common, especially the most common use as a, as a bomber during during the war. Mm -hmm. It was designed as a fighter. It's unique that it has an internal bomb bay, and it was designed to actually ground hug terrain and fly it low under enemy radar and drop a nuclear bomb and oh, scoot geez. out at sure. Mach 2 as fast as it could so it doesn't get blown up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Got to get away from those right. once you let one go. It's, it's, it's an actual deep strike fighter. Mm -hmm. that was, that's our deep strike bomber. That's what it was designed to do. Mm -hmm. This is before the days of like radar evading technology. The, the, the technology was to fly, fly as low as you can. So this actually, this big nose is because it had a, it had a big powerful radar that we could track ground as it flew mm -hmm. really close at high speed. And it's one of the first fighters that had a big radar scope right for the pilot to, cool. to, to actually you know, see what was coming. Mm -hmm. Well, and that would make sense why they faced a ton of enemy fire too then, because if you're flying low and you carry the internal and external payload that right. this thing was able to bring to it, I mean, I'd want to take that thing down if it was coming to me. For the strikes in Vietnam, they actually didn't use the internal bomb bay. They, mm -hmm. they put a giant fuel, an extra fuel tank in there. So this, you basically had to come around to get into to Vietnam, you had to come from you know a distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't like you were just taking off and, and dropping your bomb a few right. miles away. You had to go somewhere. And so they, they, this had two ex external fuel tanks, an internal fuel tank. When you're flying at Mach 2 with this giant engine, uh, typically you're not cruising at, that, at speed, but you want to be able to have that power, so, and that's just going to guzzle fuel. Yeah, so. right, but you want to be able to hit the juice if you need it. Right, mm -hmm. right, and you're carrying a big bomb load. This carried twice as much payload as a World War II bomber did. Sure. So a B-7, <sighs> this, is, this is more, they carried more bombs than a B-17. That's so. crazy. Yeah, and, it's a, and, it's, and the thing's moving fast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stories about you know, the, these things in combat, and they weren't very good, supposedly, in combat. Mm -hmm. That's totally not true. This, this, okay. plane, this, this was the plane designed to go deep into enemy territory, do a job, and come back in one piece. Unfortunately, when you bomb the same location over and over and over again, um, the enemy catches wind of where you're going to be and what time, so they, they can set traps for these things. They were, they were a lot shot down by enemy anti-aircraft fire, mm -hmm. first with artillery, because these are flying in low, doing low right. attack runs. Um, totally vulnerable to ground fire. Well, and not clearly not made to dogfight MIGs. Um, well, they could. I mean, the, the thing is, in a, in a fight with a MIG, these guys wouldn't even bother fighting. Yeah, because you can fly to. away from it. Yeah, they just yeah, see you put you in the rearview mirror and just and just take off. Yeah. Um, but they could they could scrap. They did have a twenty millimeter gun mm -hmm. uh, built in internally, a, which a, we've got displayed on the side there, right? Yeah, That's right. what's it's, captured. It's this is this is underneath what would be there on the, on the real plane, would mm -hmm. be a big ammunition drum, and it had the the, the Vulcan cannon, the, the rotary cannon. Um, this particular. You know, once the North Vietnamese started getting their legs a little bit in the fighter game, they, they said MiG-17s, MiG MiG-21s, they'd send up after these guys. Um, there was very specific rules of combat, of engagement. These guys couldn't attack fighters on the ground. They were not, sure. for, forbidden to do it. So they'd have Can't to wait. The airfield. If they were going to engage in the enemy fighters, they would have to wait until they were airborne. I'm sure they loved and, that, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, it's got to be demoralizing. Like, I can see the fighters on the ground as we fly over this base to go attack somewhere else, but I can't do anything about mm -hmm. it. Not to mention I've got enough to blow them up right. and finish my mission. And, and they, 
these originally would have had bombs on the ex on these external pylons. Mm -hmm. um, as the the Vietnamese got a little bit more uh, confident in their their air to air skills, which basically meant flying at these things as fast as they could and shooting a missile and then trying to scoot away before they had any <laughs> yeah, return right, fire. Before the retaliation, then one it, the, the, the the tactic was just to fly at them tr head on if possible, mm -hmm. shoot their missile as they were approaching, uh, as they were closing the distance, and then scoot. And then these guys either had to evade the missile or. You know, why would you bother pursuing something when you, you know, you're, you, mm -hmm. they only get one shot and you can just fly away from them. Um, so they had to either evade the air-to-air -air missile or um, they did put, start putting missiles on these things to defend themselves. The sidewinders, right. which were notoriously bad. Sure. <laughs> you know, it, you could fire a sidewinder at something at that time. They just didn't have the technology to be as reliable as, as, mm -hmm. as one would think. So um, you, you ended up with four, si you know, four of these, these, these small missiles just mm -hmm. in hopes that one of them would actually hit. But... So this is kind of like the later uh, war configuration. Originally, they were all silver. They went to Vietnam, painted silver. Mm -hmm. And this camouflage was all done in theater. So all the planes oh, cool. got the same camouflage. This is the later version of it. They had two different distinct versions of it. This is sure. the later uh, version of the camouflage. Well, that's a cool way to illustrate then that they're, you know, so the, the, the bomb bay door does work. We'll show that. But I like that you've got the external ordnance there because that would have been a fuel tank later in country. Right. And then obviously you got the sidewinders equipped there because yeah. now they're in, in a position to defend themselves. So it does make sense. Yep. I like that. That's cool. So, um, should we go, yeah, let's go over some yeah. features? So we got a combination printing and stickers, some cross element stuff. Let's let's mm -hmm. start there, and then we'll go into the play functions. Right. The the tail number, the 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 uh, round L on the wing, and the side of the features. There's no way we can do them without making stickers. It right. just crosses too many too many pieces. Too, too much of the camouflage. Mm -hmm. And like we said in the box car video, uh, and a little bit on Friday, these are kind of the the new era Brickmania stickers. Right. So if you need a bit of a tutorial, go back and watch that. They apply super easy, and then once they're on. They are on, so uh, it, it just kind of helps sometimes to, to see someone right. walk and through it, and Landon does a good job. Placement is, you can get the placement just right with the new tech. Yes, so it's, yes, you can. It's so much better. Yeah, so recommended. These, these stickers are a kind of a game changer for us. I, wish I think we so too. We should have thought of this a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> They're here now, though, and that'll, right. that'll be good moving forward. But then let's hit the printed stuff, right, because there, I love that cockpit. Right, there is a, a number of printed elements. You do have the vent, or the, the gun port for the Vulcan cannon on the front. Uh, inside the cockpit, have to have to do a close up of. There is a printed like dashboard has the radar. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty iconic. The the what they have for the F one hundred five was at the time was a pretty immense uh, instrument panel. Sure. Um, and then of course we have this uh, the F one hundred five sort of signature um, ejection seat. It was mm -hmm. it was a pretty famous you know I guess it was complicated. It was pretty advanced for its time. Ejection seat. Uh, the the studs galore uh, sticker that that is actually sticker that is not printed but mm -hmm. the, the little triangles of the ejection seat warning symbols those are those are printed so there's, it's there's a quite a few printed figure pieces plus the figure so, it's a mix yeah right right and there really wasn't much because the camouflage is sort of painted on mm -hmm. that's they didn't when these went into into the field a lot of them had really nice unit numbers and markings and stuff on them they all just painted out yeah uh, sure with, with, <laughs> when, the, when they painted the camouflage over it so they went in there shiny shiny and and, and 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 spotless and steel with a lot of cool artwork on them and then they ended up getting painted over um, when they went over the whole the whole fleet yeah but we like showing off the tail numbers right, right so ours was painted and then had the tail numbers put no. back on <laughs> I, I did not make a silver one i should have I, i've done that before like the, the full mm -hmm. yeah with the, the with the, the su27 SU right um so First of all, you know, obviously this thing has a lot of, you know, opening bay doors, some cool play features, but the one that I like the most is the fact that it is a club. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, it is the, one of the most swooshable jets you'll ever right. get to play with, and that, you know, that's, a, that's important to me and is important to a lot of people too, and so I, I love that aspect. So the loadout is included. This is the appropriate loadout for bombing, especially the later, the later bombing runs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, towards the end of the campaigns, um, with the missile loadout. So you do get the, the, the missiles, the two fuel tanks, the sort of bomb rail, I guess, that would be, it's attached to the to the bomb bay doors. Mm -hmm. Inside, if, if we were to open it up and show you, there should be a fuel tank in there. I didn't bother making it. Right. When, when you're displaying it, you're never gonna see it. But, mm -hmm. um, but it's I, cool that the function's still there. Right, I could pull this off and we can we can see inside there if you wanna see how deep this bomb bay is. Yeah, that's awesome. So it does have mm -hmm. the bomb bay. If you wanted to go and, and put like yourself a nuclear bomb in there or something like that, you could do that. Um, has this normal arrestor hook, the landing gear do, do, do fold down, do everything, mm -hmm. does everything it's supposed to do. So. Sweet. Do we so. want to pop down those landing gears so we can watch, sure. it, watch it's, it sit it's, around? It's been a while since I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny, we make these videos like like well over a month oh, after Oh, I know. The, we were literally just designed. talking about this in the mini fig of the month video where <laughs> Landon was like, ah, I've, I've moved on. <laughs> I don't know if I can get my fat fingers in there to get to pull that thing out of there. 
then the functions are there. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to illustrate. Does right, it, right. So it does work. Yeah, so. it does. It does. Does what it's, it does. What it's uh, advertised to do. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put this down on this landing gear. So. Whoa! Yeah, nice. <laughs> I'm always amazed when it, <laughs> it it doesn't collapse. It shouldn't collapse, but it, you mm -hmm. know, worst things have, been, have happened. Landing gear are tricky. I mean, that's that's uh, that's definitely the part that everyone is kind of <laughs> like, oh, I wonder how they made that function work. It's fun. And this this particular plane, because of that bomb bay, they had to do the landing gear in the wings. That's why there's no there's nothing here mm -hmm. because that land, it'll interfere with the landing gear. So those landing gear are huge. This thing has to be big enough that they can service. On a tarmac, I suppose. Yeah. So, so it's tall. Does have the arrestor gear. These are these things back here. They're they aren't the afterburner. The after, this thing has an afterburner, but it's the engine is buried inside the airplane. These are actually oh. air brakes. So there are four air brakes on the on the Thunder Jet or Thunder Thunder Chief. Sorry, uh, four air brakes. When it was landing, they would they would uh, only deploy two of them because under here is where the parachute would come out. So it does, oh, have, cool. it does have a, 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 a parachute to slow it down. Sure. Um, you know, these things were notorious for like hogging up runways. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> it's, it's a fast plane. It doesn't have a huge amount of wing area. Mm -hmm. it, it can't just glide it at a low speed. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be coming in at a high speed, uh, high speed landing. It's moving when it comes right. down. Well, interesting. Yeah, see, those are the kind of functions because you never know, you know, designers trying to capture just kind of the, the sleek look or just some angles in the back. But then you're like, no, that actually folds out and deploys as an air brake. What a cool function. Well, that's, I mean, you're trying to try to capture everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I couldn't, the wing is so thin, I couldn't really do the, the ailerons on it, but we mm -hmm. do have the, you know, movable, uh, the, the tail, tail, tailerons. Yeah, tailerons. <laughs> trademark. But yeah. No, no, I'm sure that is trademark. Yeah, somebody, by yeah. someone else. No, it's, it's a, uh, a horizontal, horizontal stabilizer. Okay, cool. <laughs> So I got to get back into my airplane jingo I've, lingo. I've been making tanks for <laughs> tanks and, and APCs for a while. Here. Well, I'd say this is a, this is this and that were a heck of a way to get back into this whole yeah, thing. Yeah. So I think that that's a, definitely one of the premium kits. Where's the rotor? The I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so many helicopters. Right. Yeah. Nice to see something this this kind of sleek. So definitely a lot of cool features on this aircraft, and some still available online. Uh, remember, this is one of those larger models too, so the the restock frequency will be significantly less. There actually less. will not be a restock because there's some significantly rare parts, and we discovered as we were making the set. So it we have some extra, so there, there's a possibility we could do a limited restock. Okay. Uh, but just talking to the production department, they are not confident that we can do a restock unless something changes. So. Don't hold my word for it, but there is no restock planned mm -hmm. for twenty at this point for twenty twenty one, or ever. Uh, we basically, if we do another one, it might be the G model, the Wild Weasel. So this is the bomber version. Mm -hmm. Wild Weasel was the the, the follow on to this, mm -hmm. um, and that might, if there's another one, it would be that a totally different model. So this, if you if there are in fact copies available by the time this video comes out. They may be it. Oh my goodness. All right. So if your heart just jumped up into your throat, the link's right here. Because <laughs> I didn't even know that until we sat right, down. Right, right. And that was sort of a later discovery after it was already in the production. We were very long, far along in the process. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I could have actually changed, made some changes. But um, yeah, it's just, I mean, that's the way it is. We don't, yep. own, we don't own the machines that make the bricks. We are at the mercy of the, not only of Lego, but the aftermarket. Mm -hmm. So when a certain piece goes out of production, we can't just call up Lego and say, hey, make more of this. Right. For one, they don't. They won't They're even acknowledge me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, we're Lego fans, but we don't have any sway over what gets made at all whatsoever. Yeah. Well, that's very good to know. I'm <laughs> glad we got to sit down and, and talk through this then. Uh, I, fingers crossed for maybe a limited release in the future, but otherwise what's left is left. And uh, this is not one you want to miss out on because right. obviously it's a huge uh, uh, staple of our, our presence in Vietnam. Right, right. And, and Vietnam Bricks doesn't come around regularly. We have a full schedule this year, so it's not going to mm -hmm. be like, oh, Six months from now, we'll put out the Wild Weasel version. Right. It might be a couple of years down the pipe until okay. another follow-on model happens. Well, that is good to know. Um, <laughs> obviously, it does come with a pilot minifig. So unless you've got some more you want to talk about. I'm done. Let's flip over to Landon. We'll bring him in here and uh, learn a little more, more about this uh, another excellent mustache. All right, so now we got Landon joining us because we got a minifig to go over. Full disclosure, he does come with his rebreather. Rebreather, uh, yeah, oxygen mask. Oxygen yes, mask. Yes, yes. Um, we just don't have it. So we wanted a closer look at his face. but That's, yeah. It comes with it, we it promise. It. Um, so yeah, it, again, another mustachioed pilot person. Um, yeah, I, I, it, I guess it was the 70s, you know, that rough time period, mm -hmm. you know, roughly in that era. So uh, you really did see a crap ton of mustaches on pilots. It's excellent, it's wonderful. <laughs> we need it to come back. So, um, and it, apparently it's like bad luck to, uh, to, cut the, to trim the mustache while you're deployed, so. Oh. 
Boy, that was, man, he must so have so just been <laughs> glorious. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. So I figured I'd, I'd uh, pay a little bit of homage to that. Um, yeah. Another really cool feature on this head would be those sunglasses. Mm -hmm. um, so those are modeled after the official issue sunglasses. And um, we've actually done some cool printing techniques to it. There, there is a layer of gloss, like clear ink, on top of the black ink to give it a nice little re reflective, cool. semi-reflective shine. I don't know if you can see that on the camera very well. Um, but there is a, a glossier layer. Can you of flash it back and forth a little shing, bit? Maybe shing, catch shing, that, shing, catch shing, that shing, glint. Shing. Any any glints? Did you catch them? Yes. Cool. Thumbs up. Okay, so it's there. Uh, and then we're just including the regular. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're just like yeah. So it's there. Nice. <laughs> Nobody questioned that. Nobody questioned it. <laughs> <laughs> I questioned it. I know. Is it's it there? Good. It's all good. I hope they don't think I'm lying. Um, <laughs> Le stock Lego helmet on this guy. I actually really love that that newer the newer Lego visor. The combo is great, and it, it interfaces really well with that oxygen mask mm -hmm. that does come with the kit. Um, I've had a similar minifigure for like the F4, similar stuff. Okay. On this guy, but it is a complete overhaul of that minifigure. Um, I'm working with um, I, I got two different predominant tints going on um, on this minifigure to kind of try and capture that that look to it. And I don't know, I'm, I'm really pleased with how this, this, this printed out. Uh, that, that previous pilot was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I'm just loving the, like, what we can do with our new printing technology, our new printing techniques. It's all kind of coming together. Really, really excited for this one. Yeah, kind of um, continuing to push the envelope, finally absolutely, paying off. Absolutely. So you can, you can, it's sort of a generational thing. You can see previous um, pilot minifigures and you can see where, where some, some similar elements are there. Um, some de definitely things have changed, so it's it's cool seeing where this is going. Um, we got that survival vest um, on top, or uh, yeah, we have the survival vest uh, over that pickle suit, and uh, that's kind of a um, that survival vest is just a really lightweight mesh thing with different survival equipment in the event that they have to you know bail out of the airplane. Snack pouches. Snacks. I think uh, shark repellent. I know the Navy guys have shark re repellent. It just says shark repellent in a, like a box, and it's like, whoa, that's that's cool. Is that similar to bear spray? I have to know what shark repellent is. Is it something you like put in the water? I think like, it's, it's like I don't know. Does it make the water like spicy or it's something? It's just a like, gun yeah. you can fire underground <laughs> or fire underwater. Like, dang it, a shark attractor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got the wrong kit. Um, but uh, let's see. Yeah, that survival vest, and then you have the parachute harness uh, with parachute on the back over top of this. Um, that was. Um, I was, uh, when I first made this pilot, I didn't quite have that full detailed parachute. I just had like the back protector. Man, this thing was so complicated to try and trace where all the different parachute harness lines went. Oh boy. All the different pull cords. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, that, uh, that was, that was uh, quite a challenge, but I, I hope that uh, the results you know, speak for themselves, that you can see where all these cords are wrapping around. Um, this red thing here, that is an automatic, um, I'm trying to remember now, um, it is an automatic parachute like deployment system that when they set like an altitude and if like let's say the pilot's unconscious because that is or you know it's a, when they're ejecting they're they're subjected to some crazy g-forces mm -hmm. so or heaven forbid spiral right right the, so yeah. they, you know they might not be in like a, a, they might not be able to deploy the parachute so once this drops below a certain altitude this automatically deploys the parachute that little red device there um, he's like, is keeping track of the, uh, you can see, you want to see it, Dylan? No, no, right no, no. I, I, you're good. <laughs> Where is it? Um, <laughs> well, I just saw you like look over. Like, oh. I, it's, it's a cool figure. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I like hearing the history. Don't stop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a cool little piece that you can kind of see it threading around there. It, I think it's like some sort of like metal cable housing where there's an internal cable that slides around. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be cool to like get a hold of one of these in real life. No kidding. Like, someday. Um, just sitting in the office with a parachute on. Like, it's for later. What? What do you mean later? Uh, parachute on the what back. What is he doing later? Um, and then around the sides you have, uh, I guess you can see in the corner here on either side, there is like, like a, there's a hook. And that would be when they're, sit, when they're sitting in their seats, um, they would be able to uh, clasp that into these things hanging down here. And that's just like the leg harnesses. But when they're walking around, they unclip that just because it's, way more comfortable to walk around without sure. getting a permanent wedgie. You know? Makes a ton of sense. <laughs> so, uh, pull cord for that parachute, that manually, you could pull that. Um, and then on the legs we see, uh, that is an anti-G 
uh, compression, yep. those compression fans. Uh, and that'll actually, uh, I believe it connects into the, somewhere in the cockpit that it's a uh, pressurized like air. And um, when they're pulling uh, high G-force maneuvers, these these pants will freaking inflate on them. Yeah, and, to stop all the blood from <laughs> yeah, going to just like, your legs. Yeah, so the blood will pull in your legs and you'll pass out. So this is like, it's, it wraps around your waist, it wraps around your legs, and it just like ugh, squeezes you like a Forces tube of toothpaste mm -hmm. and then all the oxygen goes to your, or the blood goes to your brain. It's crazy that they, yeah. like, whose idea was that? That's Well, they probably um, found it out through unfortunate means. Like, you let's, know? Uh, I passed out when I did that. Yeah. Um, and then finishing it off on the bottom, just some leather boots there to for additional protection, fire resistance, I guess. Um, and that kind of rounds out this entire minifigure. One of my favorites, um, just so much cool source material, so much, like, quite a design challenge, actually. Um, and then just the, the way the way it turned out at the end, um, just incredibly pleased with it. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did making it. Uh, I think it goes really nicely with this crazy kit. I love that, that space age look to it. Almost. I know the intakes are fantastic, but that's awesome. You know, you, you get an overhaul of a figure like that and having all of it uh, explained is, is super cool. There's a lot of interesting history and research there. Very comparable to, to exactly what goes in a kit. So thank you, Landon, for, for showing that off. This is the F-105 Thunder Chief. Like Dan was saying, um, this is probably all we're going to be able to do. Maybe a limited batch. So link right over here. If there is some still left, take advantage now. Otherwise, come back and watch the video and wish you had. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you very much for watching.